58,000 pounds of power. Built with heavy duty, I-beam structural quality steel. Tooling, machined to precise tolerances from solid stock. Gas carburized, oil quenched, case hardened to a minimum hardness of 58 Rockwell C. Aircraft quality hydraulic hoses. Over 45 years of experience and research to guarantee superior performance. UL approved components, safe and easy to use. Huth, the industry leading name in automotive pipe benders and end finishing equipment. With a Huth tube bender in your shop, you instantly increase your profit potential because now you're installing custom made exhaust pipes that fit like original equipment. With tubing that stacks neatly, you'll save thousands of dollars that you'd normally have tied up in inventory. And yet, you'll have the ability to install custom built pipes on the growing number and variety of cars on the road. The result? Customer satisfaction. With your machine's versatility and access to Huth's over 7,500 pre-programmed bending cards, you'll never turn away business or make your customer wait for delivery because you don't have a particular pipe in stock. You'll come up with cost-effective solutions for customers' special needs while they wait, which builds your reputation and your business. That's why a Huth bender is such an important asset in your shop. Every Huth tube bender is built from scratch in our own factory. We take raw stock and create tooling with automated precision machining. Sub-assemblies are welded with the latest robotic equipment. Structural elements by skilled craftsmen. We transform individual electronic components into user-friendly control panels. Every bender undergoes rigorous factory testing and is set up and calibrated so you'll be ready to bend on delivery. We control every aspect of our benders so you never need to go elsewhere. We can answer your questions, solve your problems, order your parts, or create a special tool for your customized applications. Through time-tested concepts and ongoing research and development, Huth Manufacturing Company has improved and refined its entire line of equipment and tooling. From our efficient and economical models designed for smaller shops, to Huth's most popular models, the 2806 and 2008, the versatile range of machines, options, and accessories available with Huth Benders allows us to satisfy the needs of your budget and still meet the demands of your shop. Even if your business is not involved with the automotive industry, Huth Benders are at work making a variety of products. Huth Manufacturing Company has remained responsive to the needs of a changing industry. We've spent years perfecting our benders to make them versatile and easy to use. To be most effective in your shop, Huth tube benders must be quick, convenient, and accurate, and easy to learn. So we've designed controls that are uncomplicated and easily accessible, and Huth's copyrighted program cards have a reputation of their own for being the most accurate in the industry. They'll enable even the beginning installer to start with a stick of tubing and end up with a perfectly fit pipe. But there's no better way to see how easy a Huth bender is to operate than by operating one yourself. No matter what type of bending or end finishing your business requires, contact your Huth dealer today and discover how quickly and easily you'll make more money by bending. The Huth Model 1600 and Model 2806 represent the latest lines of tube benders. Check your operator's manual for specific information about your machine. There's a detailed description of components, terminology, bending techniques, and end finishing procedures in the manual. Anytime you have a question, take a second to stop this demonstration and consult your manual. In fact, be sure and read your entire manual to familiarize yourself with all the features and safety guards of your particular machine before you start using it. The most important elements of any Huth product are the safety features. We've designed our benders to be the safest in the industry. However, operate your machine with caution at all times. Before you use the bender, you must allow for an adequate swing area. Pipes swing when bent. Double check this area to make sure no obstacles are in the path of the pipes as they swing. Make sure you're wearing proper safety clothing, gloves, safety glasses, bump hat, 
and safety shoes. Never operate your bender without the safety guards. Always make sure they're securely in place. Follow these precautions and the others listed in your manual and use common sense and you won't have any problems. This is the front of the machine where you'll find the controls and do your bending. There are three types of controls, push button, knee pad control, and semi-automatic. Huth Model 1600 and Model HB10 have on and off push buttons and a knee pad control. Models 2806 and 2008 have a knee pad control as well as on, off, forward, reverse, and automatic push button controls. Model 2008 adds an auxiliary on off switch located at the swedger box. This is the sled. It holds your radius dies and pushes them on the guide plate toward the swing gates, which hold the back shoes. You can see that the dies and the back shoes are color coded according to tube diameter. Size dimensions are also stamped into the dies and back shoes. The dies must be used with back shoes of the same corresponding size. It's the action of the radius die hydraulically pushed into the back shoes that provides the force to bend your tube. The amount that it's bent, or the depth of bend, is determined here at the depth of bend indicator on the left side of the bender. In this case, the indicator shows a 90 degree angle. On a semi-automatic machine, there is an additional depth of bend indicator on the right side. Once a desired degree is set here, depressing the automatic control will cycle the main ram through the forward and reverse motion and automatically bend the pipe. Using Huth's Model 2806, we'll now describe several bending techniques and problem-solving methods that will help you get the most out of your machine. But again, please read your manual thoroughly before operating your bender. Time does not permit us to cover all aspects of your machine in this video. Huth benders use 3-inch, 4-inch, and 5-inch centerline radius dies that perform bends as shown here. These three radius sizes are used for most tubing diameters. Check your catalog for a complete listing of radius dies. The 3-inch centerline radius die can produce a recommended maximum depth of bend of 135 degrees. The 4-inch allows a recommended maximum bend of up to 145 degrees. And the 5-inch centerline radius die will bend up to a recommended maximum of 155 degrees. However, when bending 2 and 3 quarter and 3-inch diameter tubing with the 5-inch centerline radius die, the recommended maximum depth of bend is lower, 135 degrees. Huth also manufactures a 5-inch full radius die. This die will allow a recommended maximum depth of bend up to 170 degrees. If you do not have access to a full radius die, you can still achieve the same deep bend by performing a double bend technique with two dies. We'll start by using the 5 inch center line radius die and bend to 155 degrees. Next, we'll install the 4 inch center line radius die and make the bend deeper to achieve the same depth of bend we performed with the 5-inch full radius die. Your program card will indicate the depth of bend for each die in the event you need to perform this double bend technique. Care must be taken when bending tubing not to exceed the depth of bend capable by the die. As shown here, the tubing will begin wrapping around the back side of the radius die and may become stuck. If your swing gate pressure is set too low, the back side of your bend will flatten and crush. To correct this, adjust your pressure to read between 400 and 600 pounds per square inch. Check your operator's manual for details on this procedure. Another problem may occur if a bend is required near the end of the tubing. The result? The pipe is crushed. To remedy this, a Huth end finishing tool may be used as a plug. Always use a smaller plug size than the diameter of the tube. In this case, a 1 and 7 eighths inch swedger die is inserted into the 2 inch pipe. The plug provides resistance during the bend and prevents the tube from crushing. Some exhaust system applications may require a bend close to a previous one. In this example, the bend is made with a full shoe. The edge of the full shoe digs into the pipe creating a damaging crease. 
A half shoe or three quarters shoe is used in this situation to eliminate the damage. We'll install a half shoe and make the same bend on a similar pipe. As you can see, the crease is eliminated. However, a new wrinkle appears from the half shoe. Wood blocks may be used to absorb the force that creates these wrinkles. The block thickness must extend slightly into the cavity of the back shoe, as shown here. Place the blocks next to the half shoe and bend the pipe. The blocks may be crushed, but they prevent the tubing from being damaged. In some tube bending situations, it's required to flatten a section of pipe. Here's how we do it. Install tool 852 against the sled. Use the proper diameter back shoes for the pipe. Then jog the ram in until the pipe is flattened to the proper depth. Once a pipe has been bent and cut to size, there still may be work to perform on the pipe. End finishing refers to the procedures to form the pipe so it may be connected to manifolds, converters, mufflers, or other pipes. The Swedger Expander Attachment, located on the back of your machine, will allow you to end finish exhaust and tailpipes to original equipment specifications. You can easily create flares, ball joints, flanges, and slip joints. In addition, the unit can expand and reduce tubing. Let's first demonstrate operations using the expander. Your Huth Bender comes equipped with the AccuSizer expanding unit. Once the sizer is installed, your bender is capable of expanding tubing. First, slip the adjustable collar guard assembly over the cylinder shaft and tie rods. Secure the assembly to the cylinder using the two half-inch jam nuts provided, and finger tighten. Extend the cylinder shaft and screw the arbor securely onto the shaft. Tighten all the way down to the shoulder. A wrench may be used to secure the arbor, but do not over tighten. Screw the arbor tip securely on the arbor. Lightly grease the arbor and the face of the adjustable collar. The adjustable collar has been calibrated at the factory, so once it's installed, you're ready to expand. The 508 Arbor has two detachable tips, the 498 Small and 499 Large. The 498 Arbor tip is only used to expand pipes to one and one half inch inside diameter. All other sizes use the 499 Arbor tip. In our first example, we will expand a one and one half inch outside diameter pipe to one and one half inch inside diameter. First, install the 498 Arbor tip. To determine what segment sizes and adjustable collar settings to use, check the expanding chart located on the side of the Huth Bender. For a 1 and 1 half inch expansion, the chart shows a yellow 473 segment set is required with an adjustable collar setting of 2. Install the yellow 473 segment set by simply forcing it over the arbor tip. Dial in the adjustable collar until the yellow 2 lines up in the bullseye. Insert your pipe to the base of the closed segment set. Move the control handle down to engage the segment set. Lift the handle to close the segment set, then rotate the pipe slightly, and repeat to get an even, round, one and one half inch inside diameter expansion. Check the pipe for a good fit. Next, we will be expanding a two inch outside diameter pipe to a two inch inside diameter. The larger 499 arbor tip is required for this expansion. Locate 2 inch inside diameter on the expanding chart. The chart indicates that a red 474 segment is needed with a setting of 5. Install the red 474 segment set. Dial in the adjustable collar until the red 5 lines up in the bullseye. Insert your pipe to the base of the segment set and expand. Again, engage the control and rotate to get an even expansion. And check the fit. Now we'll be expanding to 3 inch inside diameter. The same 499 arbor tip will be used. 
The expanding chart shows a green 476 segment set is needed with a collar setting of 13. Line up the green 13 in the collar. Install the green 476 segment set. Insert the pipe and expand to a 3 inch inside diameter. Check for a good fit. We'll now move to the swedger side of our machine. The first application we'll perform is a deep or internal swedge. This operation will enlarge a tube to a specific deep inside diameter. Install the swedge die. Secure the pipe with the proper collets. Remember to always close the safety guard while operating the ram. Move the cylinder forward slowly until the tool enters the tubing. Continue to move the shaft forward until the tool reaches your desired depth. To create a reduction, which reduces the outside diameter of the pipe, we install the reducing die. Secure the tubing and move the cylinder forward slowly until the tool slides over the pipe. Continue to move the shaft until the reduction has been formed. Take care not to go too deep with this tool or it will crush the pipe. Next, we'll perform a 45 degree flare on a two inch pipe. Attach tool 853 to the 815 die holder with the 45 degree flare facing forward. Insert the pipe and clamp down. Slowly bring the tool up to the pipe. Tap forward until you form your desired flare. Retract the cylinder shaft and remove the pipe. To create a flat flare, we perform two operations. First, we perform a 45 degree flare as we just described. Install tool 853, bring it up to the pipe. Tap the control and create a 45 degree flare. Retract the cylinder, but leave the pipe in place. Next, reverse tool 853 and slowly bring forward until the flare forms a flat surface. Next, we'll make a female ball joint. Attach the proper size female ball joint tool to the 815 die holder and secure the pipe. Slowly bring the tool forward until it starts forming. Then tap the control until it bottoms out on the ridge. Back the tool off and you have a female ball joint. To make the male ball joint, there's two operations. First, attach the proper male ball joint tool to the end of the cylinder. Secure the pipe in the collet holder. Slowly insert the tool and tap the control until the tool reaches the second marking line. Retract the tool. In the second operation, we will be doming the end of the male ball using die 557 with the 816 die holding pin to create the completed male ball joint. The next application will be the auto flange. Install tool 518 on the cylinder. With this operation, special 1720 DF collets are required. Also, the pipe must extend one and one eighths inch beyond the inside edge of the collets. Make sure the collets are lined up straight with the tapered sides toward the tool and then secure the pipe. Bring the tool in very slow. The tool and pipe must line up precisely to create a proper auto flange. We'll now return to the expander and demonstrate how the accusizer can create some of these same end finishes. A 45 degree flare can also be made using the 508 arbor with the 499 arbor tip and the 440 flaring segment set. This process is a quick way to make the flare. The accusizer allows you to create a flare very close to a bend. Huth also makes the 441 flaring segment set which can flare up to a three and a half inch outside diameter tube. The accusizer can also make the male and female ball joints using the 508 arbor and 499 tip. Both male and female ball joints are made with the same segment set. Install the proper ball joint segment set according to your tube diameter. Insert the pipe to the base of the segment set to create the male ball joint. To make the female ball joint, you insert the pipe only to the groove on the ball. Again, the accusizer is a quick way to perform the ball joint end finishes and allows the joints to be made very close to a bend. If your bender was built after August 1988, it came with the Accusizer expanding system. This system uses the 508 round arbor with the 498 and 499 arbor tips and a total of five expanding segment sets. 
These sets expand from 1 and 3 8 inch inside diameter to 3 and a half inch ID. As you can see, the inside of the segment sets are round to match the arbor and tips. If your bender was built before August 1988, it came with the pre-accusizer system, which included two arbors, the 501 and 502, and four segment sets, which cover a range of expanding from 1 and 3 8 inch ID to 2 and 3 quarter inch ID. As you can see with this older design, the arbors have flat sides that match the inside of the four segment sets. The old and new arbors and segment sets should not be interchanged. The new accusizer system can be installed on any Huth machine, no matter how old it is. Even though we stock all the pre-accusizer tooling, we recommend you convert your older machine to the accusizer system. Check our catalog or call Huth for conversion details. Huth also has old and new designs of collets and collet holders for the swedger. If your machine was built after January 1985, it came with the newest 1700 series collets. These collets are narrower than the previous design, which allows swedging operations to be made closer to a bend. If your machine was built between September 1981 and January 1985, it came with the 700 series collets. These collets are longer than the new design and are limited when working with a short tube or close to a bend. You can update to the 1700 series collets by simply converting the collet holders. Check our catalog or call Huth for this conversion. If you have a bender that was built before 1981, it came with the 200 series collets. As you can see, these collets were only tapered in one direction. This design allows very limited swedger operations. If your machine uses these 200 series collets, Huth recommends you convert to the new swedger box. The newly designed swedger box can be retrofitted to any age machine and will allow you to use the newest collets and tooling. It also comes equipped with a larger cylinder for more power especially for reductions on 3-inch diameter tubing. Contact Huth for conversion information. With Huth's pipe bender capabilities in mind, let's examine some real-world applications of the machine. There are two primary ways to bend a pipe, pattern bending and program card bending. We'll start with bending using Huth's program cards. These cards will provide all the information you need to bend a pipe that fits like original equipment. And Huth program cards are the best on the market. Once you've selected the proper card, it's important that you read the entire card before you get to work. Across the top is the vehicle information. This card is for a 1980 Cadillac. This next section explains the raw stock requirements. For this car, you need 2-inch diameter tubing made of 16-gauge steel and the overall length of the pipe will eventually be cut to 29 and a quarter inches. However, never cut the tubing to length before you've completed the last bend, and always make sure the tubing you start with is at least 12 inches longer than the center line mark of the last bend. In this case, the tubing should be a minimum of 35 and 7 eighths inches long. The bending information generally works its way from the front to the rear of the tube as indicated by F and R on the card. There are three parts to a bend, location, rotation, and depth. Location is the distance from the front of the straight tube to the center line of the bend. Next is the rotation in degrees. You measure rotation by attaching a rotation dial on the tube before you begin bending it. The third part of a bend is its depth in degrees. The last part of the card is the remarks area. It explains what size radius die is required defines the symbols that may be located above the center line marks, and lists other information and tooling needed to bend and finish your pipe properly. Here's a list of some of the symbols you may encounter in the remarks area. Before we start bending with Huth's program cards, keep in mind that with some older Huth benders, the use of a pusher block is required when using 3-inch and 4-inch center line radius dies. We've selected card number 3T5493, a tailpipe for a Pontiac Firebird, as our first example. This card represents an easy bending operation. Three bends, no end finishing. However, there is one pipe flattening procedure. The card indicates a four inch radius die is required and calls for center line marks of six and a half, 14, and 22 and a half inches. Remember, always choose a pipe at least 12 inches longer than the center line of the last bend. In this case, 34 and a half inches. Snug the pipe in the dies. 
mark the pipe with a felt tip pen at 6 and a half, 14, and 22 and a half inches. Expand a short piece of tubing as a sleeve to assist in marking the pipe completely around its circumference. This way, you'll always have a reference mark as you rotate the pipe. Mark the overall cutoff length, in this case, 32 and a quarter inches. It's a good idea to grease your dies and shoes before you begin bending. When using a program card, always bend your pipe with your rotation dial and center line marks to the right of your first bend. In the event a bend needs to be made in the opposite direction, the card will tell you to do so. This is referred to as a reverse bend. Line up your first mark with the center line between the shoes. Now, snug up the pipe tight. Next, attach the rotation dial and set it to zero degrees. Remember to locate the dial at least 12 inches past the last bend center line mark. Do not adjust or remove the dial until all bends are completed. Our card indicates the first bend is 57 degrees. Set the automatic depth of bend and bend the pipe. Move the pipe to the next center line mark at 14 inches and snug the pipe. The card shows the pipe must be rotated to 70 degrees before the next bend. Rotate the pipe until the rotation dial reads 70 degrees. Snug the pipe tight and make a 52 degree bend as indicated on the card. Our third center line mark is at 22 and a half inches. Snug the pipe. Our card tells us the pipe must be rotated 110 degrees before we make the bend. Rotate the pipe until the dial reads 110 degrees. Snug the pipe tight and set the automatic depth of bend to 27 degrees and bend the pipe. Lastly, cut the pipe to length. The card directs us to flatten as required. So line up and mark the flattening point based on the original pipe or from the vehicle itself. Use tool 852 to flatten the pipe. The next program card will be an easy application bend using 3-inch pipe. This card requires a 5-inch radius die. The rotation dial is attached after the pipe has been marked and snugged tight at the first center line mark of 7 and 5 eighths inches. The dial is set to 0 degrees. In this example, we'll operate the manual controls. Our first bend is 34 degrees. The asterisk at our second center line mark instructs us to change to a three-quarter shoe before making the second bend. Snug the pipe in the dies. Rotate the pipe until the rotation dial reads 124 degrees, and the second bend is made to a depth of 15 degrees. For our third bend, we return to our full shoe. Snug the pipe at our third center line mark. Rotate the pipe to 203 degrees and bend the pipe to a depth of 39 degrees, completing the program card. It's important to remember that your Huth bender is strong. With our precision dies, we are capable of making deep bends in 3-inch pipe. The next card will be a medium difficulty application. Four bends, including the use of a half shoe and block of wood. The first bend is made at 6.5 inches, 0 degrees rotation, to a depth of 39 degrees. The asterisk at our second center line mark tells us to use a half shoe as well as a block of wood. We install the half shoe and blocks of wood. Insert and snug the pipe at our second center line mark. Rotate the pipe until the rotation dial reads 260 degrees and bend to a depth of 64 degrees. The blocks of wood and half shoe are removed. Following the card information, we return to the full shoe for the next bend. The next center line mark is at 34 and a half inches. The pipe is snugged and rotated to 255 degrees and bent to 20 degrees. Again, our card directs us to install a half shoe, this time without a block of wood. The pipe is inserted and snugged at our 38 inch mark. The pipe is rotated to 81 degrees and bent to 21 degrees, completing our bends. This program card is an example of a more complex application. It requires the use of a 4-inch and 5-inch radius die, 
as well as a longer pipe, 69 inches overall. However, in this case, the pipe will be bent from R, or rear of the pipe, to F, the front of the pipe. This is opposite of how most pipes are bent. Secure the pipe in the dies at the first center line mark, 6.5 inches, and install the rotation dial, set to zero. In this example, we'll again use the automatic depth of bend indicator. We set the depth at 32 degrees and make the bend. We then snug the pipe at the second center line mark, 18 inches. Rotate the pipe to 311 degrees and make the bend to 32 degrees. We'll remove the pipe because the card informs us to use a half shoe on the next bend. Once the half shoe is installed, we snug the pipe at our third center line mark. The card tells us to rotate the pipe to 161 degrees. We set the automatic depth of bend indicator to 26 degrees and perform the third bend. Remove the pipe. The card indicates to return to the full shoe, so we remove the half shoe and reinstall our full shoe. Insert the pipe and snug at the fourth center line mark, 31 inches. Rotate the pipe to 263 degrees. The depth of bend indicator is set to 58 degrees and the fourth bend is made. Snug the pipe at our next center line mark at 40 and 3 quarter inches. Rotate the pipe to 178 degrees. Set the auto depth of bend to 95 degrees and make the fifth bend. The asterisk above our next bend informs us to reinstall the half shoe. So we remove the pipe, swap out the full shoe for the half shoe, insert the pipe, and snug at 45 inches, our next center line mark. Rotate the pipe to 66 degrees, as called for on the card. Set the auto depth of bend indicator to 19 degrees and make the bend. The next bend, which is this boxed area, requires several operations. First, remove the 4-inch radius die and install the 5-inch radius die. The card also calls for us to remove the half shoe and reinstall a full shoe. Insert the pipe at the 53-inch mark and snug in the dies. Rotate the pipe to 72 degrees. The auto depth of bend is set to 145 degrees. And we make the bend. Remove the pipe. Take out the 5-inch radius die. Reinstall the 4-inch radius die. Relocate the pipe at our same center line mark, 53 inches. Set the auto depth of bend indicator to 128 degrees. And bend the pipe at 53 inches again. The symbol above our final bend instructs us to reverse the pipe. We only reverse a pipe when the card instructs us to do so. We reverse the direction of the pipe as we insert it in the bender and line up our 65-inch center line mark. We rotate the pipe to 67 degrees, set our depth of bend to 73 degrees, and make our last bend. We then cut the pipe to length. The card directs us to perform an end finish on this pipe. We're instructed to size the F, or front side of the pipe, to a 2-inch outside diameter by 2 inches deep. That completes the pipe. The second method for bending pipes is pattern bending. You create a new pipe by using the old pipe as a template and copying it. Pattern bending is used if you don't have a program card for the vehicle, or if you're doing a custom job. Lay the original pipe out and prepare a blank program card to record your measurements. This pipe has four bends. In order to measure our new straight pipe, we must determine the lengths of the center line marks on the existing pipe. To do this, mark the center and center line of each bend with a cross. Next, measure the distance from the front of the pipe to the first bend, which is 7 and 3 eighths inches. Always measure to the center of the cross. Record this on the blank card. The distance between the first and second bend is 14 and 3 eighths inches. Record this above the line for the second bend, then add this value to the first center line measurement of 7 and 3 eighths inches. The total, 21 and 3 quarter inches, is the proper length from the end of the pipe to the second bend. Continue in this fashion until you have all center line measurements for your new pipe. We then use the existing pipe as a template to measure and record the depths of bend. The safety guards are removed to assist this process. Replace the guards once you've determined the new angles. 
Place the pattern pipe on the swing gates and jog the machine until the bend angle lines up squarely with the gates. Check the degree of bend at the depth of bend indicator and record this value on your card. Repeat this process until you determine and record the depth of bend for all four bends. We now have a program card to bend this pipe. We've determined the center line marks and depths of bend from our existing pipe. The only other information we need is the rotation. We will identify the rotation for each bend while we're bending the pipe. Remember to start with a pipe length that extends at least 12 inches beyond the last center line dimension. Line up the first center line mark and snug the pipe tight in the dies. As with all program card bending, we install the rotation dial and set it to zero degrees. We then make the first bend to 85 degrees as we recorded on the card. Then, snug the pipe at the second center line mark. To get the proper rotation for the second bend, we place our pattern pipe flush on the swing gates. Simply rotate our new pipe until the angle of our first bend matches the pattern pipe. Then, snug the pipe tight. Next, read the rotation in degrees from the rotation dial and record this on your card. In this case, 145 degrees rotation and bend the pipe to the depth indicated on the card for the second center line mark. Continue this sequence for the remainder of the pipe. Once your pipe is completed, compare it to your pattern pipe. As you can see, it's a good match. If you don't have a program card for a particular car or an old pipe to use as a pattern, a wire may be used to create a template by following the path the pipe will take on the vehicle. As we've seen for the pipe pattern, lay the wire out and determine your center line dimensions. Record the information on a blank card. Use the wire lined up with the swing gates to determine your depths of bend. Record these on the program card. Insert the pipe and snug tight in the dies. Install the rotation dial and set it to zero. Make the bend at the first center line mark. Snug the pipe at the second center line mark and as we did with the pipe pattern, lay the wire flush on the swing gates and rotate the pipe until the angle of our first bend matches the wire. Record this value from the rotation dial on the card and make the second bend. Continue this process until all the bends are made. Compare your completed pipe with the wire. It's a pretty close match. In addition to the complete line of tube benders, Huth Manufacturing offers an array of accessories that will save you time and money. Keep all of your most used end finishing tooling within easy reach with the Ready Rack 2. Mounted close to your Swedger expander, the Ready Rack 2 provides quick access to a variety of tools and is large enough for 3 inch tooling. And changing end finishing tools is fast and simple with the Quick Trick tool changing accessory. You can swap tools quickly by slipping them into the slot on the holder which threads into the Swedger cylinder shaft. Our Quick Trick tooling will work on all Huth machines. Huth's Quick Crush turns your pipe bender into an oil filter crusher. Quickly and easily mounted on your bender swedger unit, the Quick Crush Oil Filter Crusher compresses oil filters to 20% of their original size. The included cart collects the oil and drains it into your 5-gallon bucket for proper disposal. The cart doubles as a storage rack for the filters, and when the Quick Crush is not attached to your bender, it makes a handy storage tray. The Huth Rod Bracket Bender Accessory quickly attaches to your expander and will pay for itself quickly by allowing you to bend your own muffler and pipe hanger brackets. As we've seen, your Huth Bender gives you complete pipe bending and end finishing capabilities. But with the high speed motor option, you can do it all 25% faster. Imagine what that can do for your efficiency and profit potential. Foot pedal activation is also available on most models. And keep in mind, in addition to our full line of tooling, Huth Manufacturing can build custom tooling to meet your special needs. Your Huth Bender is a rugged machine. If you follow closely the maintenance schedule listed in your operator's manual, your Huth Bender will be a money maker in your shop for years. 
However, in the event that you do have a problem, your manual has sections that cover troubleshooting and repair. Always look at your manual first, but if you can't solve it yourself, the Huth engineers are available to help you, so that you're always able to increase your shop's income by custom bending your customer's automotive pipes. Huth Tube Benders, first and still the best. Thank you.